So Anthony has done more to expose the gray watch market of all these shady activities. Let me just name a few, right? So you can sign your watch and dude straight up steals the watch. Okay, that's a pretty bad one. You can sign your watch, the dude sells the watch, and he doesn't tell you. So you have to call him to get an update on the watch. And magically, when you want the watch returned to you, oh, they sold it that day. Wow, amazing, right? It's almost like they sold it like two months before. Next, um, let's say you can sign and they tell you they can get X for the watch. They actually get more than X and they don't never tell you. Another one is they tell you they have insurance and their insurance is very complicated and they are not too happy to pay you out. And you're just sitting there waiting as other people contacting random YouTubers, including myself, about that what is going on, I thought I would get paid sooner. I thought you guys had insurance and you guys said that you did. You guys say that you still have it and we just want our money back. We just want our money. Right, we're selling our watch not for fun, but because we need money today. Or, you know, the interesting scenario of everyone, you know, just raffles, right? You know, everyone having to do raffles now to survive as a watch company. Not, uh, not my favorite business model, right? Especially when survival is dependent on how many raffle tickets we sell today. Uh, again, uh, a very interesting, if not altogether, um, potentially legally problematic method to make money from selling watches. The other thing, fake ADs, um, letting people go during the holidays. You guys know I, I hate that um, as a business owner, even if you have to carry the employees a little bit more uh, just so everyone can have a nice holiday. It's just bad juju. It's, it's just bad. You know, you never want to deal with that because Everyone's preparing for the holidays. Everyone has scheduled time off. Everyone is figuring out, you know, what they can do. And, you know, holidays are the holidays. Uh, you never want to ruin somebody's holidays, right? Now, uh, in terms of um, what is uh, going on right now, uh, one of the more interesting things is Anthony being in jail and no one bailing him out, even though he has such a great relationship with so many of these dealers, right, that he sees all the time. And I kind of wonder why they can't chip in. Right now, bail is being set on the 14th, but they could at least hire him a better lawyer. Uh, and that would go, the bail herring or maybe go better. Not that Erica is a bad lawyer, but Erica is probably really overworked for the holidays. And Erica probably needs some time herself. But this um, indication, this thing kind of summarizes the entire problem I see with the gray watch market is Anthony is probably not even the most shady of them, right? There was the wizard right before Anthony, who was also in some capacity related to Roman. I'm not sure if uh, Roman, you know, maybe of the same capacity where they did business and Roman said, yep, he did business. He paid me on time and so on. No one... And this is my big problem. Rome, no one's not going to pay Roman on time. Even for the blackout 1.0, Anthony made sure to clear his debt with Roman that day. Okay, and I'm pretty sure that the consignees were never given a phone call that day. I'm pretty sure the uh, any anyone who had a watch in transit was not updated that day. You know, people who actually, you know, the end customer has always been effed over by the gray watch market dealer. And I think it's more relevant today. And you got people like Paul Forp frightening the FBI is going to come after U.S. citizens for freedom of speech, which is God bless. I mean, if you guys get arrested by the FBI for freedom of speech, let me know, man. I'll help you guys out free, free of charge, because I would find that so ludicrous that that would even be a statement. Maybe in the U.K., government agencies throw people in jail. I don't know for, for, for uh, what they have to say about in YouTube videos. But, you know, hey, I'm not the one having having to self-delete my own videos, right? And then my video response had to be deleted too, right? I'm not the one deleting and hiding shit. You are. So, like, who's talking about freedom of speech, right? When you have self-limited your own freedom <laughs> out of concern about what you said. Okay. That, that's enough of that. Um, but anyway, there's still copyright striking everything under the sun, but they're just not getting away with it because you can just count appeal it. And uh, if they don't file a legal, if they don't have a legal case, uh, yeah, 
the the YouTube would just give back your video, but they kind of freeze it for a little bit of time. All right, but this interaction, I really want to focus on. Jordan, I think, is a nice guy. He sounds, he seems like from his Instagram that he's an expert watch dealer, that he's IWJD, where all these respected watch dealers hang out, right? Where they essentially sell watches to each other and then increase the market price when there is actually, by definition, supposedly no customer and customer at this particular event, right? Only dealers and their friends. I just find it a little appalling, uh, this whole con conversation and the reality of it is Anthony has some points about the AD recording secretly recording the AD and so he does actually I, I don't know if he knows what he's doing but his investigation is on the gray watch market right the Italian couple who had stolen the watch that investigation was on them and he was right uh, they actually were selling and they were taking watches and replacing them with very very um high quality fake watches and it were caught i believe in florida and um and now they're being held they might be in jail maybe we need to update that case a little later but that was uh legit and he caught them and he knew that something was wrong based on his senses right and uh it turned out anthony was right about that couple it was a fake watch even though he teeter tottered on whether or not it was fake right but it was a fake watch so anthony has a fantastic idea of what type of I think Anthony knows what a scammer is like the catch me if you can. The, the Leonardo DiCaprio character knows because he said, okay, I would do it this way. I would do it that way. I would." Do. His mind is always trying to scam people. So he's coming up with these like new ways to scam. And this is uh, actually kind of interesting, right? Because Anthony, for the great watch market, he's always thinking consignment. Okay, consignment, raffles. I mean, he came up with raffles, I think, before CRM, right? He was raffling off Rolexes if you join him in consignment or follow his group. And no one could tell who actually won or not. I remember one of his raffles, right, where he supposedly met the guy. The kid didn't even know he entered the raffle. He was like, uh, okay, thanks, Anthony. Um where you, you, I think everyone puts in a dollar. It's kind of like the CRM raffle. Everyone puts in a dollar, and then, and then the raffle picks a winner, right? Um, and then there was the raffle for consignment, which was a terrible deal because you lost your watch. And all he, he was big into raffles, and then he was big into teaching and university, and so he was ahead of his time on that as well. He would have do these watch courses, right? The best watch dealer university courses available. So the dude was quite ahead of his time in terms of scams that the Watts community would be facing. And he was the leading face of, you know, the, oh, $35,000, $50,000 for a student that I put to work. I mean, that sounds kind of like a scam to me. I don't know uh, if that's, you know, unpaid internship. Like, there might be laws against that uh, depending on how he formatted it. I'm hoping that they actually got paid, right? But they paid to get paid, if that makes sense, right? With John... So um, the fake watch deal, I mean, the fake watches, like he's probably in his mind, he kind of knows about it. He's always, you know, catching people with fake watches and he's really good at that. Uh, my, again, it reminds me of the movie. Well, catch me if you can. The guy at the very end of the movie gives him a fake check and Leo says five different things wrong with it straight off the bat. That's Anthony. You know, he's not a watch authenticator, but he knows people. So I'm sure that, um, in fact, he felt so confident about the Italian couple that without, like, for me and you, it didn't seem like he had any evidence or proof, right? But to him, he was so confident. He kicked them out. He, uh, well, he didn't show pictures of them for whatever reason, even though he did show pictures of Jordan and release private text messages, which I'm sure the great watch market is really reeling from. I mean, his text messages have to be insane, and he has no problem sharing them with anyone, including on live stream, right? Where he was showing off Roman. Wrote all, he was just scrolling up and down and all the text messages Roman was uh, texting him. So no one's safe from this guy. <laughs> this guy is the great watch market killer. Uh, the consignment thing is dead. And a lot of these people re rely heavily on consignment. Uh, I think uh, Alpha Crown, he made a video. Uh, we have talked. Um so I, I don't feel bad talking about what we talked about or not not bad what we talked about. I don't feel bad about um, 
uh, saying that we have talked, okay? I've given them a little wiggle room until, um, uh, you know, until they fix the problem, which is, uh, they mentioned in their video. Consignment, man. Oh, man. A lot of their business, a lot of people's businesses in this market is just purely consignment. I don't know where all this money came from. When, no, sorry. I don't know where all this money went. Right, like these CRM people, these Roman Sharp people, these Anthony people, these great Grand Calvert, they have like an infinite amount of money, right? And really nice cars. And then suddenly, all the sudden, they're doing raffles because they're broke. All of a sudden, they're moving out of their rental apartment or rental uh, second floor, even like though they had big dreams of a speakeasy and a studio and all this stuff, right? And Roman, like, you know, you fire Peter. Peter seems to be a super popular character. I mean, his channel is killing it. You know, congrats, Peter. Uh, if I was into watches, I would probably watch it more, pun intended. Um, but there, there's a lot of weird things going on right now. And it all stems from, okay, if you're going to make all this money for the last two years, where is it? That you're flashing nice cars, you know, $100 million company, $200 million, Who knows how much million, hundreds of millions, right? Like, where is the money? Like, you, you must have made a ton of money when the market was good, right? Where anyone could sell a watch for double the price, right? As Marco would say, the prices are changing every day. And when he said that, it was going up every day. So worst case scenario, you're a terrible salesperson. You don't sell the watch in a week, and the week is the watch is now up 5%. So you can sell it more the next week. And people are just looking to buy them for any cost, right? So your customers are not difficult to find. They're looking for you, okay? So where did all that money go? You know, where did all that money go? I'm, I am um, kind of astonished that no... So like you're telling me no one saved no money? They, they spent all the money on rental cars and rental apartments and rental everything. No one... No one saved money for the hard times. I, I really failed to understand how that's possible. I don't understand how Peter was let go during the holidays. I don't, given that how popular of an employee to do, the dude was crushing it for LB, right? The comments, half the comments are about Anthony, the other half are about Peter being let go. I don't get that for Roman. I don't understand CRM and their raffles. That's something Anthony was a leader in, an inspirational figure in, right, Raffles. He got on that one early and kept doing it because it probably made him money. Um, I just don't really understand, like, where, like, all these people with the flashing monies and all, I mean, where did all the money go? Like, surely they must have had some assets and some, you know, payments and something, right? Like, if you're making, you're a hundred million dollar company, you, you gotta have assets, Yeah. Like, what, where are they? Are they in watches? And that's why, like, they're going down in price. But surely you have cash and and other other things that can stabilize, right? Jewelry. I don't know what else a uh, watch deal would have. But it, it reminds me of a lot of the Pokemon market where people went all in. And then when it crashed, like, people are, like, losing. Their, they lost their home. But you never lose your home because your business runs. And when it runs good, you take money in cash and you put it in the bank account. Did no one, like, think about this? Like, no one read Aesop's Fables? The Ant and the Grasshopper? I don't know. Uh, where's the money? <laughs> where's the, I mean, they, they had two to three really good, really good years. And then and then suddenly they're all broke and doing raffles. Like, it doesn't make any sense. Like, where did all those money go? Anyway, let me know in the comments below what you guys think. Bye, guys.